Praise the Lord. Uh, we are going to talk about there is a spirit which is in um, the spirit of the age. This time we call it the spirit of the age because that is what is prevailing at work, in the community, almost everywhere. It's a spirit of the age, it's a spirit of rebellion. It has gripped everywhere, everywhere. Because that is one of the key features or the key traits of devil's character, a rebellion. He rebelled against God, but God did not disappoint. God is equal to the task. He threw him out from heaven. So today, we are going to talk about rebellion or the sin of rebellion. It's one thing that is affecting Christians' walk with God. If in a work, your boss, your supervisor, your manager tells you to do something, no, I don't want it. It's rebellion. You are refusing a lawful order. Remember, God planted you in that company specifically to show them that there is a light. Now they say, no, I'm not going to be a Christian because of you, the way that you live. Prophet chapter 4, verse 23 to 27. The Dachimi, can you read for me, please? Prophet chapter 4, verse 23 to 27. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Amen. Proverbs 4, 23 and 24, I read. Amen. Okay. 23, I read. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Our feet are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. 26, 25, 27, 25, 26, 27. Let thy eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all the ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless this reading of his word. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The Lord, when he was asked by people, do you eat this, don't you eat this? He said, no, it's not what, it's, what, what a man eats that defiles him, but it's what comes from the mouth. It's coming from the heart. For out of the mouth, speak the abundance of that. So as you are speaking, it's coming from the heart. That's why when somebody is angry with you, they are speaking not from the mouth, but from the heart. They are speaking their anger. They are speaking their frustration. They are speaking their malice. We need to guard our heart. When we did our revival with the clean heart, Sister Olubumi, she brought a very good teaching about the heart. I hope you will remember that those teachings, those are very powerful teachings. The heart. So my beloved sister had told us to bring five things, your notebook, your pen, your hymn book, which we sang, your Bible, don't forget your Bible. I will not say the physical Bible because most of us, we are connecting using your phone. It's easy at times to use a phone to connect. Just ignore all the messages until the service is over. So before we start, like I always say, Ezekiel chapter three, verse 18 and 19. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way. To save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require a dying hand. When you read this Bible verse, it's not only on the preaching, even the people that you know that you are not talking to. That's where evangelism comes into play. Evangelism is not going on the street. You have got nephews, nieces, people that listen up to you. People who look, people who say, ah, auntie, this, when they want something, they come to you. So it means you've got a measure of influence upon their life. Speak 
Jesus into their life. Don't say when they are gone, you come in and start saying, yeah, I, I, I was just, you know, I, I, I was praying for more time. Which more time? Tomorrow has never been promised. A rebellion. They therefore wanted a shortcut to the throne of God. He wanted God to resign from his seat so that he could, he could, he be, he could be God. That's why the Bible says the thief cometh not but to, for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he came that we may have life and life more abundantly. John chapter 10, verse 10. So Satan came to kill, to destroy. That He works hard at his job. The devil works 36 hours in a day. He is working extra hard. While Christians are busy sleeping, Christians are keeping malice, Christians are picking offense at every slightest thing that happens in their life. Ah, my neighbor, they parked their car here. You are angry, shouting. Are you mad? You are insulting everybody anyway, everywhere. Yet the devil is working. You have, you have probably become an instrument of the devil because you are removing people from God's presence. He will take everything from you that you will let him have. Many people's jobs, he has taken people's jobs at work because of rebellion. Me, he cannot say, he cannot come and say that to me. It's pride. My God is going to punish you. God is not going to punish anybody. I've told Christians, God is not punishing anybody. Or say, my God, so that get, um, get away with your God, so that a person can say something negative about Jesus Christ. No. Sin must come, but who through him it comes. If you provoke people that they've got to speak ill about God and you think God is going to punish them, no, God does not weigh the way we do. You let somebody's words come because they're angry. He said, what, what do you think Jesus is going to do? They said, good, you see what he's going to do. God does not listen to such stupid prayers. It's your character. Yesterday, during evangelism, I was teaching about character and calling. Character is lacking. Distance is lacking in Christianity. That's why we've got all these sorts of problems we are not supposed to be talking about. These things, we should, we should be finding them in the world or in these uh, bread and butter churches. But even the holiness ministries have not been spared. I speak to ministers of God all the time, all the time. They tell me things that you say, what? Is it happening in holiness? I say, oh, yes. Christians, our major problem is we want to have our needs meet yesterday. When you want something from God, we do it like spoiled. I usually use American, because America has always, the, has always been the light of the world. They were spoiled, that's where everybody started to know that children have got rights. If you don't buy me the phone, I'm not going to do this. So when they come with a request, they don't tarry in the presence of the Lord. Why? They want it yesterday. The thing that you want, probably a need arose today, but you now want it from the Lord yesterday. God does not work that way. God simply does not work this way. God is not dictated to men. You have got to persist over a long period of time to restore certain things in your life. Patience is the key. If it took you years to get into a spiritual or a physical mess that you are in today, why would you expect God to restore you overnight? He had been probably in the Catholic church for 20 years. Now all of a sudden, idolatry, those things that you are doing, you are not baptized, you are not reading the Bible, all those things, they don't go away overnight. Or in the church of Mormons, where, or in the Jehovah Witness, where they say our Lord Jesus Christ, our God is an angel. I once met a man from their church who called himself a bishop. We had a discussion. I opened the scriptures. I said, I want to show you that Jesus Christ is God. I can give you up to a thousand Bible verses. He went, I just give him a few basic. 
After about 15 Bible verses, he said, no, I don't have time. I said, sit down and listen. You cannot be spreading heresies. That is your Bible. But your Bible, you change, you change where it's written Jesus Christ to put Jehovah. The book of Philippians chapter 2 did not give us Jehovah. He said, at the mention of the name Jesus Christ, that's the name that we have been given. So you can see rebellion already. These are people, they look, they come out, they have got this appeal, social appeal, where they look like they go to people's needs and they usually go to vulnerable members of the community. I have not seen them evangelizing to affluent members of the community. No, they go to people that are looking for their papers, people who have not yet settled in a particular country. Because why? Because of their need, they become vulnerable to recruit. So the devil is still using the tried and tested and tried technique, the carrot and the stick. You want us to help us? Yes, but you have got to be converted. You have got to come to our church so that we can help you. So like I said, if you are in this mess which you are in today, you have been abusing your wife, you have been abusing your children, you have been abusing your neighbors over a period of time. You expect them when you come in and say, please forgive me, I've been abusing you. Don't expect them to say, oh, clap hands, say well done. No, you have hit them beyond all feelings. They just look at you like this, but they are no longer happy with you. They have gone that stage of not even tolerating you, they cannot send you. Why? Why are they not forgiving me? Why are they cruel? No. Healing takes time. It takes time. There is no cure all in the Bible, but we use all the provisions of the Bible to lead a balanced life. It's very important. It's not a one size fit all. That's why when the Lord Jesus Christ met the three blind person, but Meos, that young man was born blind, and the other one, another one, he touched the eyes, another one, he put mud on his eyes. He did, three, if these three men were to meet at one point, he said, no, you are lying. That's not how he heals. So we use the provisions of the Bible to lead a balanced life. What works for this brother does not work with me especially in our relationships. Maybe your husband drinks beer. When he drinks, he becomes a nuisance. And you cannot tolerate it. You are busy chasing. God, why did you give me such a foolish husband? God, why? All those things are getting in the ear. Those words, remember, the devil is going to use them against you. When you want to say, my husband, can you please forgive me? Say, no, you called me foolish. You called me this. Be very careful with the time. Very careful. There are no shortcuts to a successful Christian life. Let me warn you. People that get a two minute conversion, they lead the greatest rebellion in the church. Just give your life to, to Jesus Christ now after two minutes. No, it's not that two minutes. No, you start the journey to transform your life. It does not work overnight where you just wake up and say, you know what? Yeah, now I'm, I'm born again. Born again is not what I tell you, it's a condition of the heart. You will begin to work along the holiness of God. Not what, I, not what I describe, not what I tell you, no. It's not what pastor tells you. Pastors are telling things, are telling people things they want to hear because people have what each ears. My brother, you are going to get a car. My brother, you are going to be promoted. This person we are talking about promoted, they are probably a gardener in their, in their compound where they are working. And now I say, that, what promotion are you talking about? You don't encourage them to go to school to further their education so that they can be promoted. No, you are busy pronouncing blessings to them. I say, God is going to prosper you. I can see you want to do a business. You are, telling, you are talking to somebody who does not have even a mind of say, if I buy this thing, how do you calculate this thing? You need to go to school to learn, some, to learn some of these principles. So you don't just come in and just tell somebody, you are going to do this thing. But that's not the business of church. The business of church is to teach people to live a holy life. 
I will never teach you how to make a billion dollars, never. The same way that I told my children, I will not buy or pray for them to buy a car. If he buys, okay, to God be the glory. I can only pray, I can pray over the car, but I will not pray for God to give him a car. But if he works hard and get it, to God be the glory. Even in my former church, I never prayed for anybody to get a car. I don't know what you, what you have got in mind to use that car for. If that car becomes an instrument of the devil, I do not want to be held responsible. So I never pray for such things. If you, God has given it to you, to God be the glory. But go into the office of God and ask him why, tell him why you need a car. God, I have got a growing family. We need to go and be doing shopping. We need to do this. That's okay. But don't come to a man of God and say, God, I want to do this. And as you are asking him, he wants a seed. He wants 300, he wants 500 euros so that the blessing can manifest. That God, that when you are born, your parents never give you even your God to the Lord or a fowl. But now they are demanding money, they are taking money. You become a captive. So the greatest hindrance in the Christian lives is not only rebellion, it's unforgiveness, rejection and bitterness. Rebellion is their father. It becomes the, the, the covering wing, just like poneo, fornication. Unforgiveness, rejection, bitterness. Then people begin to rebel. The devil is ministering. I feel rejected. I am bitter. Somebody shouted at me. I was spoken to as a child. But your bosses are insulting you every blessed day. They are still going tomorrow, the next day, you are the first person to get there. At times they will call you if you are, you are the most foolish person here. They will tell you, I wonder how you came into this company. How did you get, who allowed you to, to be in this company? You, your smile will be reaching the ears, say, that it's Papa God. Though. But when a pastor comes and rebukes you, a minister of God, people hold a very long face. That's rebellion which was mentioned in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. Christians will never conquer the world for God in their present condition without deliverance. In the last five, four or five sessions, we have been doing deliverance, deliverance during our Friday, Friday uh, midnight prayers. It's very important to pray with understanding how to deliver yourself. Those things, they don't go on their own. You have got to pray. You have got to speak into your life. So in, your, in our present state as Christians, we cannot conquer the world. The world is conquering us. That's why when you look at the church in the world, you are seeing better, better people outside the church than inside the church. Ten courts. People were just using the name Christian, but there's nothing Christian about them. The church is in a very sorry state which the Lord said, my church is dirty, no cleanliness. So we need to live a Christian life it means we must obey the whole Bible, not cherry pick certain scriptures. No, you don't pick the scriptures that you need or that you want that speaks only to you and say, that's, that's say the Lord, no. It means that every aspect of our lives must be lined up with the precept of the Bible. When the Bible says, obey your husband, obey your father, obey your parents, there are no two ways. Obey authority. We fear more the people at work because if you are fired, you have no source of income. That's why we take all the insults. But in the church, I've been a pastor for over a decade. I've seen people trying to rebel in the church. Thank God, those that rebelled, I, I never disappointed. I was equal to the task. They met their fate. God knows where they are. Rebellion should never be tolerated. Neither God is part of rebellion. Rebellion cannot be tolerated. We have got to observe every aspect of the Bible and align it with our lives. It's not a question of picking this one, picking that one. A witch must die. 
Who said the rich must die? Love to those that persecute you. Here you are, you are busy raining cases on brethren. Instead of showing them love, love covered a multitude of sin. And here you are, you are busy accusing, ah, this is my cousin, is a witch. You are pushing them away. God had put you as a light in this family. When they've got disputes in the family, they will say, ah, let us call evangelist Vivian. Let us call auntie, she will come. We know when she comes, everything is solved. Let us call auntie Noella. Let us call auntie Jovita. Let us call auntie Jimmy. Let us call auntie Helen. They, they, when they come to that point, that's when you become, they see the wisdom of God upon your life. The life is shining. Even those that are saying, I'm not going to listen to this man. You are bringing a case upon your life. We pray against the spirit of Jezebel. But the same Jezebel is following us. It's like somebody says, ministers of God, I don't drink beer, but they're entertaining guests in their home with beer. So you cannot come and be giving us that one. You drink beer, that's how God sees it. As long as that beer is in your home, what is he doing in a, in, in a house of a believer? Talk less of a pastor. It's not only a scandal, it's a disaster that beer is in your home. The Bible tells us how to live every area of our life. How we live with our neighbors, how we live with our parents. Being the most blessed member of the family does not give you right to insult those that are seeing that senior you in your family. Many have been blessed. Many are outside the country. The whole family now depends upon you. So you all say it's like the way, it's like the law in the, in the family. They don't do anything without you. So because you are being heard, you come and boss everybody around, it's wrong. Those that senior you are your seniors, let it remain that way. I've got a brother who is not a believer, but a very good heart. I tell him things that he is not comfortable with me. He, he really calls me. But when he tell me, I remind him. I said, when I'm, I'm not going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ with the blood on my hands. Your blood will surely not be on my hands. It's a conversation that we have heard a thousand times. It's not comfortable. A cousin, sister, a minister of God, married to another. I say, what does the Bible say? Do you read this Bible from outside? This is rebellion. Rebellion it is in its worst form. You are supposed to be a minister, God, a, a minister of God. Now you are in your second marriage with another man. You have got a child here, a child there. What do you tell a sister that is just meeting another man? Said, ah, I've got three children from two different men or from three different men. What are you going to tell the sister? Trained as a pastor. So you can see those Bible colleges, they are busy, just, just go out, just go out. There are Bible colleges which the devil is running himself. Now he say, no, forget about the grace. There is no grace that cancels any Bible face in the Bible. No ways. No precept will ever be canceled. He said, heaven and earth shall pass, but my word shall not pass. It will go into eternity. He spoke it, it shall happen. God is not willing to change his condition because we are, um, we, are, we are a rebellious generation. No. God is not out of debt because I'm using your phone now. I'm using iPhone 13. God is not like that. He did not forget anything in the Bible for this present wicked and dying generation. No. He looked far into it. This is what Daniel saw. He said, Daniel, seal it. It is for an appointed time. It will come to pass. It will not tarry. In the day that the Lord wills, it will come to pass. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible teaches us, be not be conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind daily. Renewing of your mind daily that you may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. It's very important. Why? We must discipline our mind, our will, emotions. This idea of Christians having rights, rights. I was speaking to my brother, Pastor Siwai. 
just having some discussions about you know ministry and some counseling sessions. I said, where do Christians get their rights if you are a dead person? Because when you die daily to yourself, you cannot wake up with rights. It's impossible. So when you see the flesh rising above the spirit, just know your salvation, there's something, your salvation has got a question mark. We must learn to control our thinking the same way we control our physical body. This person, they did this to me. I'm going to retaliate. I'm going to do this thing. No. The Holy Spirit leads our spirit, which leads our soul and which leads our body. Let it go from the spirit. It leads your, it leads your spirit and your spirit man leads your soul and your soul goes down to your body. Then you've got control over your body. But through the Holy Spirit, no, because that's why we say we have no power of our own because the power that we get it's him, the Holy Spirit, that leads us into world truth. That's why they said an, 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 an idle mind, is it an idle mind is a devil sexual. The passive mind is an empty vessel inviting demons to have a field day in their life. Thinking rubbish always in the head. Even ministers of God, when you see them doing certain things, you see, you said, what? Is he supposed to be a believer? He is supposed to be a minister of God. But when you see such things happening, then you know we are close to the coming of the Lord. Because he asked to say, when I come, will I find faith on earth? Is he going to find faith on earth? What is bringing rebellion in the body of Christ in our lives today in the world? Christians, we have got a lot of excuses. Christians, we want shortcuts to life. That's why people are getting into occultism, manufacturing miracles. They are not even miracles, they are magic. All those magic are being captured on a camera. Why would a cameraman be positioned? He now knows what the Lord is doing. Say, come, let me pray. Let me do. If God is to do something, let him do, but without a camera. When Apostle Paul was healing people with his, with his clothes, there was no camera to capture it. So you cannot come and now doing it for public relations and garner and check the media attention through Facebook, YouTube. People are getting money from YouTube. You are bringing us customers, merchandising the word of God. We need to be careful. So there are no excuses in the Bible. There are no shortcuts to the whole Christian life. No shortcuts. You must work to live the Christian life. It's hard work, it's not easy. It's not like a spot where you just sit one and a half hours, you're watching and clapping your hands, no. You must work to be a good parent. I mean, not to work, go to job. Being a good parent, it takes a lot of hard work to be a good child, to be a good Christian all your life. God does not learn honor lazy Christians, no. You must be very hardworking in everything that you do. God has been working. Why should you be lazy? You were given two hands. If disabled people are working, going to work on a wheelchair, what about you? There is a blessing for every verse in the Bible that you obey. There is a blessing. But let me tell you, there is also a case for every verse in the Bible that you disobey. For rebellion, every rebellion that you do. So if you, ob if you observe half of the Bible, you are half, you are half blessed. If you observe half, you are half cursed. So decide to follow the whole Bible not just selected scriptures. That suits what you want to hear. I have got a friend who claims he's a minister of God. I told him he are a child of Belial. He is on a fourth wife as a servant. I do not say, say it's an abuse when I call him servant of God, child of the devil. On a fourth marriage, and he still climbs the pulpit and say, say, you are judging me. I said, no, read your Bible very well. Matthew chapter seven, verse 16. 
They say by their fruits. I went through the scriptures. I said, let us start from Malachi chapter 2, verse 12. They sit a contract or a confident. That's what God said. So if you are a child of God, you observe what he said. You cannot come say, my bishop says, your bishop is not right over the scriptures. These are the scriptures. They say he did not say anything. I asked him this question, maybe he did not have the answer. He is just like you. People who call themselves into ministry. I went through the scriptures. I answered every single question. I said, do you see where you are now? If you cannot stand a chance with me, a mere mortal, do you think you can stand in his presence? Look to all the Bible verses speaking against them. They say, you are judging me. That's why I don't want to talk to you. I said, I will not shed a tear. I will actually remove you from my phone because I don't need you now, next week, next month, next year, or the next hundred years. But if you die in this state without repentance, you're going to perish. If you don't go back to your first wife, you are going to perish. Yes, you can see people coming, listening to the word you are saying. They will enter, not you. So you are going to be used as a signpost of showing people this is the way to go to heaven. Yourself, you remain on the broad road. So if you have got sin in your life, they have opened the door for the devil and this demon to attack you the family and the church. Sin is a crack in your armor, whether unknown or unknown to you, especially that rebellion. If you have got it in your, in your heart, you don't have to say anything. Speaking in your heart, say, no, it's like this, it's enough. Before you know it, things begin to happen in your life. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the death was sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. So when the Bible says, he, he who that sinned is of the devil, is saying sin is a way of life. Last week, we were fighting with this one. After next week, you're fighting again with this one. At work, they know you as a fighter. They know you as a fighter. So, like I said, we are talking about the sin of rebellion and rejection. There is a family of this, you know, rebellion, rejection, and forgive. It's like a family. These are the root causes of most of our problems as Christians. Rebellion, rejection, bitterness, and unforgiveness. And forgiveness is something that when, when it comes in, when you want to forget, say, no, 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 you know. Your husband has got a child outside wedlock. Do you want him to kill that child? Say no. You, how many things have you done before the Lord? You have done your own, which this man has probably forgiven you. Now you are playing holy. Where is forgiveness? That's why the Bible says 70 times, seven, seven times, 490 times in a day. I've showed the scriptures to say, said in a day. Not in a month, not in a whole lifetime, no, in a day. It means that person must be so intimate. You must be living with this person to spend that amount of time. Because if you are at work, they wouldn't be able to offend you more than 490 times. They will probably offend you two or three times. So we must work to cleanse our lives of all rejection, bitterness, rebellion, so that we are not controlled in any way by these emotions or rejection. Because when you rebel, when you are angry, you want to get even. I am going to do this to him because he did this to me. If it's a woman, they will close the shop. So they want to see what you are going to do, which is bringing in adultery in marriages today. All these things come from rebellion. You have rebelled against the word of God. They said, yes. Let's see what you are going to do. They are not all, not every sister in these churches is a Christian, is a born again. Once your man is gone, it's not easy fighting from one down. That's what I say. I was doing everything. Say, no, stop lying. A prayer of a wicked person is an abomination before the Lord. You can go in fast. If you fast without understanding, those prayers will not be answered. You have got to make right. It's not going to God. I was telling one, one sister, a relative, 
He came, he said, ah, my husband, this, I said, no, it's not a question of touching his pillow. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, praying, touching the pillow. When you see the man, you leave him. So, ah, you are very foolish. That's why the Bible said the children of the world are much wiser. They don't go and pray. They deal, they make their relationship work, and then they go to pray. You are going to pray when your house is crumbling. What are you praying? It's always very first, and 90% of the Christians, they are busy say, let me pray. I want to pray for my family. No, you don't pray in the natural, in the, in the, spirit, in the spiritual, before you, before you execute it in the, physic, in the physical. Address the needs which are supposed to be addressed. Then, because you are living in rebellion of the word of God. Marriages of Christians are in a sorry state. They are praying. I was talking to one female minister. I said, sir, this thing that you are saying is everywhere. You may have said, ah, the shop has been closed for six months. They say, ah, six solid months when they come, they are busy praying here. Can you tell me what are you praying? Read First Corinthians chapter 7 from verse 1 to 5. Already in the courts of heaven, there is an accusation standing against you. No amount of prayer is going to be answered. You can pray, be wasting your time because you are praying without understanding. Understand these things, Christians. Rebellion only works against you. It does not heal us. Unforgiveness is very detrimental to our lives. 95% of Christians going to hell are going there because of bitterness and forgiveness. Somebody went to hell and said, it's full of women. I said, do you know why? Unforgiveness. My husband did this. The same husband that bought you a car, you don't come and talk about the car. Now you hold about some, something else. The same husband that looked after your family, raised up your family, trained up your siblings. No, you don't see those things. Now he did something. The devil opened the door which you opened. He opened the hedge. The serpent came in and bite. Now we are blaming him. You don't see yourself in the things that you have caused. Busy kissing instead of blessing. You begin to rubbish him and think blessings will follow. No, they don't. It does not work like that. Especially those that must know the Bible. That's why it's important to be taught the Bible. Root, being rooted in the word. Knowing one particular scripture and this scripture, it's not enough. It is not enough. That's why the Lord said, teach them. I was given a specific mandate. I never wanted to teach. Say, teach them these things. Teach them these things. At times you see people are spending more time, but you need to spend it with understanding. Now say, oh, now I know. Do you know what type of forces you're fighting? No. I met some young ministers. They say a Christian cannot be possessed. I say, how long have you been in ministry? Ah, sir. Hmm. Last year, that's when I get converted. And now you're calling yourself an apostle. Say yes. He's calling himself apostle. He's calling himself an apostle. Why he has arrived already? An apostle can no longer be discipled because he has arrived. That's why they've got a lot of heresies. Spewing heresies, telling people everything. The grace of God is enough. If you do something, God has already forgiven your sins. It's not like that. Don't take excuses for people. If they are working in against the laws of God, it's not your duty to sanitize their sins, no. We must forgive everyone who has done anything to us. Actual, whether they actually did something or maybe you are imagining say, ah, Sister Chimi wronged me. I'm still bitter, I cannot come and talk. Don't waste your time as Christians. You will perish and go to hell. God say, you will protest, say, why am I going to hell? You hate your brother, you are a murderer. He said, what? God, can you give me one more chance? This is the song people are singing in hell today. Give me one more chance, please. Only unforgiveness. Everything else you say you did right. Unforgiveness. Why do you want to mortgage your life, your eternity, because of somebody? Hate, vengeance, envy, strife is no part of our lives as Christians. Where is strife coming, dragging here and there? Where does it come from as Christians? 
everybody wants to be seen. I've seen some young ministers, they split five, six groups. They want to put me, everybody, they want to put me, says their mentor said, you know what? Yes, it's an honor, but not like this. It becomes a dishonor. Every one of you wants to be the, the administrator of your group. The administrator of this said, yes, why don't you come together? It's not about scoring points, I've got the people. That's why there is a lot of heresies. These are the young people who say Jesus Christ is not God. I had to come out and make three teachings about the Lord Jesus Christ with over two hours or so, six, six to seven hours, all in all. Because why? That's what that's the nonsense that you were coming to talk about. Say he's not God. How do you pray to a man that you look down upon? When you hear somebody looking down upon the Lord Jesus Christ and claiming to be a Christian, no, they are a child of the devil. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. Because thou has rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. When King Saul was being rejected, he took 22 years on that seat when he was rejected. He was not rejected overnight. When God say reject you, you may, you may still come and say, I, I got this revelation. Forget about revelation. Rebellion is the opposite of obedience. Rebellion includes self-will to want to operate. I want to do this thing. I don't want to do the thing my, the minister or the leader wants to do. I don't want to do the thing my boss, my manager wants to work. He told me seven o'clock, I want to start eight o'clock. It's self-will, it's stubbornness, it's disobedience, anti-submissiveness. You cannot submit. Generally, when a person becomes bitter, they rebel. Rebellion is always, that's why the Bible makes it very clear, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. Iniquity, that's the Bible. Let us guard against these things because our coming, if our coming does not help us to enter, stay at home. Stay at home. Do not come. The Lord is not going to shed a tear because you, do, you are not coming to church. No. Nobody loses. Nobody loses. It doesn't take away my anointing. Neither does it take other ministers' anointing. No. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, do not despise the gathering of brethren. It's for your own good when the anointing comes together. One day, God is speaking through somebody. One God, we need iron sharpening iron. That's how we grow. But when I come to think that I'm more special than anybody else, another spirit has entered. It's no longer a spirit of God. It's pride which goes before destruction. I have always gathered this in my life. When I started in ministry, I asked God for one thing. I said, give me the heart as a minister of God to this father's heart to be able to forgive, to treat everybody like they were there, like they were, they are, they are, they are your child. Because if they are like your child, you will say, okay, you cannot be picking offense. The child come, lives here, you, they make dirty here, this place, they come and break this cup. You cannot be beating them every two minutes. No, you sit them down. You watch them. Help them understand what they are doing. But kissing them doing this does not help Christianity. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Disobedience received a just reward. When they met, when they saw the children of men, they said, oh, the daughters of men were fair, said good. They transgressed their estate. But God, like I said, does not disappoint. They are chained down there. Those are the angels that are going to be released just after rapture. People are going to wish for death. People are going to cry and say, death, where are you? Death will not be found for four or five months. You will not find death. Death will run away from this one because they are angry. For thousands of years, they are still down, almost 6,000 years, they are down there. They are in chains. They will be released. Once they are released, they will be roaming the earth. They will be causing catastrophe, disaster on earth. Pray that you are not left a trapture. Because if you are, 
only God will be your, your witness. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, it says, Obey them that have the rule over you. Submit yourselves for their watch over yourselves, as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for yourself. It doesn't help you to be fighting over some. God said, I have given you to watch over these souls for me. God is going to demand to say, Pastor, I gave you this role. Why were you telling them, say, it's good to do this? That's why I don't come with heresy. I will not come and tell you something that you want to hear. I make sure I will not meet the Lord with the blood on my hands coming from anybody. If you are to be told the truth is for your own good, not for my own good. Remember, salvation is always an individual journey. On that day, you will answer. But if you are going for rebellion, you and the witchcraft and the babalao and the occultists, you will be in the same group. You said, ah, but, but for me, I was like this. He said, no, these are your brothers and sisters. You were both in occult. He said, I was not in occult. This was, they were enjoying money from occultism. What are you enjoying? Nothing. You will go and get the same punishment like these ones that enjoyed small on earth or virtuous. Submit yourselves unto them that rule over you. Apostle Peter wrote in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 10, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak of evil of dignities. They talk anyhow. It's not what you say in people's presence, it's that talk that you are saying out there. Every talk, Christians are living a careless life. They are gambling with your salvation. If rapture happens, those things, I had a sister who left this ministry three years ago, two years ago, called me. I said, sir, the Holy Spirit asked me to, 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 to call you. I said, is it the Holy Spirit or your conscience? You cannot be clear. She had rebelled. She came saying, please pray for me. I cannot get peace. There are things that I said, in your absence, there were lies, there were this. I said to God be the glory. I don't shed a tear. If you, if you come and tell me I'm, I'm a blue person, it doesn't affect me. I know I'm not blue, so it wouldn't affect me. I'm not affected by those things. One thing that I've done, God has helped me, is not to look at men, because men will fail you. I've learned not to never to trust on men, no matter who they are. Don't trust me. Men will fail you. They are presumptuous. They are self-willed. They move in what they think is right for them. Everybody else say no. This is what is happening in families. This is what's happening in church in the world today. That's what I want. It's authority. What are you going to do? Disobedient means to disobey, transgress, violate, disregard, infringe, resist, mutiny, revolt. Have you had these feelings? Do you have this kind of feelings? Ah, he's speaking nonsense. Ah, they are talking. No, I don't want to do this. If you've got these things, this is very common amongst Christians. If you check your heart, I'm, going to, I'm not going to do this. I am not going to do this. Even coming to church late, when you're supposed to come early, there's somebody whose testimony I read, they came two minutes after the service started. Two minutes, they were marked absent. Say, we're not in church. I came, say, the angel is there, marking register. Another servant of God, the wife died 24 hours later. The woman met the Lord Jesus Christ in the church. She died of COVID. She was in a, in a hospital. When she met the Lord, when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared, people thought she was mad. She said, he said, Lord, he said, if, if I allow you to die now, you're going straight to hell. He said, but we have been saving you. He said, oh, oh. He just waved the screen like this. You come to church when everybody else is seated. You despise my presence. You come as bosses and kings in my presence, 
when the king of kings is there. There are things that people do, ministers of God are doing out of ignorance. This is rebellion also. It's not only the people that we lead. No, it's rebellion. Now, because I think God called me, now I have got power over everybody. I come late. I always come 15 minutes before everybody. I'm not naive. I knew the importance of these things to leave what you say. God to say, oh, you are coming late, say yes. Do you have an excuse? I'm coming from work. I have no car, I have no car which I drive for myself. There are things that are understandable, but there are things that you know it's an excuse you are trying to give. That's why I never ask people for excuses. If you give this yourself excuses, you are laboring in vain. You are laboring in vain. Rejection, which is the opposite of love. It includes fear of rejection and self-rejection. Me, I'm nothing. Me, I'm like this. Me, I did not go to school. Me, it's not about school. It's not about school. Character and school are two different things. You don't have to go to school for you to be good mannered. No, you don't. There's no school for that. These are things that money cannot buy. You cannot buy manners. Maybe status you can buy, but you will still see it all. Oh, this one is the head is like it's like this. Reje rejection is where the demons first attack somebody. Because of the parents, this can be in the womb. Love your enemies. Love does persecute you. If you think they are persecuting, you love them. The Bible says the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they should live not henceforth for, uh, unto themselves, but unto him that died and rose again. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, 15. It's a very powerful verse. Because one person died, so the life you are living should not be your life, but the life of Christ. Galatians chapter 2, 20. So rejection is you refuse, you decline, you deny, you rebuff, you say no, you repel, you repel, you renounce, you throw away whatever a person says, yeah, get away, I don't want to. If you have got this kind of feelings, is it not common amongst Christians? The consequence of unforgiveness is the most important lesson God has taught us about deliverance. We need to be delivered and self-deliverance because nobody can come and deliver you. You've got to deliver yourself. You know yourself better than anybody else. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is iniquity and the idolatry. So symptoms of rebellion, stubbornness, denunciation, people refusing to submit. Obedience, submissiveness, when you're walking on the path of Christian, true Christianity. Like I said, this rebellion, there are things that you found in this common demon family. Disobedience, refusing to submit, stubbornness, self-will, I've got to do it my way. When you see these things as a Christian, you need deliverance. You need deliverance. If you don't, you could be walking in, you could be laboring in vain. Like I said, rebellion is very common amongst Christians. Rebellion is disobedience. The fall of man in the Bible in Genesis chapter three was caused by rebellion. Absalom avenging Tama, it was rebellion because he thought when he spoke to the father, King David didn't, did nothing. He said, I'm going to revenge for my sister. Absalom, the same Absalom, very handsome young man, second, second Samuel chapter 13 and 15. When he started greeting people, kissing them, people said, oh, if people fell in love with him, 
while the king was sitting there, you think our people are, are living good together with one another. No, people said, let this one be our king. King Ahab, when he let his authority taken by Jezebel, the wife. Jezebel, this is the spirit that is reigning supreme in the church today. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. Children oppress, women rule. The Ahab Jezebel complex. Where men are forced to sit down. That is my child. Shut up. This is a husband that is being talked to. Not even no, stop it, no. Raining insults and curses. The Jezebel complex. Where the, the authority of God is being taken from the man. Because the sister said, no, 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 no. I am the man here. You are bringing a case upon your life. Like I said, Deuteronomy chapter 28, from 1 to 28, 1 to 13, 14, blessings. From thereafter, cases. Read the Bible. Satan's rebellion. Satan's fall was rebellion. Satan's own rebellion in Ezekiel chapter 8, uh, 28, where the Lord was describing the devil that is in some was with he had wisdom. The Lord said he's going to smite the earth with a curse because of rebellion, Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5, 5 and 6, where he said the son of righteousness shall arise with his wings of healing. That was the Lord Jesus Christ himself for becoming. Believing lies is part of rebellion. Devilish wisdom. James chapter 3, verse 13 to 18. And spiritual, earthly, carnal. Be contentious, make angry, contend with, dispute with. Opposition to someone motivated by pride. What, these are things, when you see them motivated by pride, no, speech, actions are against the Lord, against the attitude of God. So disobedience is an act of defying the commandment of God. Your husband tells you, you are not going to do this thing this week. Say, no, I am going to do it. You know, he cannot beat you. So he watches you and keeps quiet. So you are in rebellion. You are not a submissive woman. You are not an obedient wife. He says, it's okay. He leaves you. He keeps quiet. Stiff naked. The original rebellion of man, the ingredients, when you see the ingredients of Eve's rebellion, she was seduced by a conversation and the greed for power and knowledge. That your friend said, No, if your husband treats you like this, that is the snake coming in. If you try it, go and buy your own property privately. These are things that women are being taught. Christian women say, if he divorces you. Is that what the Bible says? Did you marry to divorce? No. So the price of seduction was experienced and knowledge of good and evil. The action of rebel rebellion, what did we get? Shame. Attempting to correct the mistake or cover it up. Fear with the drawing from God's presence and loss of esteemed position. Pain in childbirth, hard, hard work, toiling, and the birth of rebellious children. He saw it with Cain. Did not waste time. Killed his brother. Absalom. Like I said, Absalom's sister. Tamar was raped by half-brother Amon. He had entered into this man. He had his part of rebellion because his sister being raped. He plotted and planned for two good years. He was just, ah, good morning, my brother. How are you? He said, I'm okay. He said, I'm going to get this food. Again, Absalom falls prey to resentment and bends Joab's food because he will not go to David for him. By trying to force David to see him, he's acting out, he was acting rebellion. He came to repentance, but did he really repent? No, it was a surface repentance only. Coming said, ah, no Joab like this. That's why Joab, when he got him, said, yes, he killed him on the battlefield. He killed him. 
Why? He said that issue of 30 pieces of silver that Judas was given, when you read your Bible very well, he said, why did you not stab him? He said, I heard what the Lord, or what the king told you, don't touch my son. He said, I would have given you 30 pieces of silver. They did not start with Judas Iscariot. They were there in the Bible. After he had audience with his father, King David, he got peace with his plans of rebellion. He got favor, he was kissing people, he seduced them. He declared himself king, rebellion. So some demons that were probably in Absalom were hate, resentment, deceit. You can see them because it's a family. Arrogant, backstabbing, lying. This man, this man is an evil man, my father. Self-saving, coming in and telling people what they want to hear. Pompous, you know, you are handsome, oh, live forever. You are our king. Betrayal because he betrayed his father. Jezebel, she rebelled again. She killed God's prophet, which is rebellion, which was God, rebellion against God. She had, she exhibited hate, retaliation, threatening, threatenings. When the husband came like this with a, with a long face, they said, what is it? Is it not you are the king again? Sit down and eat. I have made Obono for you. Just eat. When I finish, do this. She took the authority of the man. She turns from a role of a woman and wife trying to upstage the king, her husband. She belittled him, connived behind his back and plotted the murder of people. Some women, some men today use seemingly pure religious motives to control others, such as soulish prophecy, telling others what to do. I see the Lord is saying here, no, let God be speaking to our private sins. Don't be told things to manipulate people. Another motive behind the rebellion was that she wanted to worship and admiration, praises. Oh, Ma, Queen Mama, Madam Queen, or oh, Lolo, they are the best. Ah, Lolo, yeah, like this. When you crave for attention of men, you get it at the expense of your soul. Yes, Jezebel died seven years after that proclamation said dogs will eat you. It was not an overnight event. Seven good years, that's when, that's when she died. When you read certain things in the Bible because you are reading off a page, do you think it happened tomorrow? No. Jezebel is a sorcery. There are male Jezebel and female Jezebels. They want people to doubt and say, ah, this one, do you think he is truly, truly called of God? Brethren, you ask yourself where, where she is right now. If you get the grace to be in the eternal abode of the devil, you will see, say, this is Jezebel. After how many years? Three, four thousand, and people come crying for five, five minutes in hell. They are still feeling the heat. Imagine Jezebel is there. Worshipping idols is worst rebellion against God. So the major rebellion was against God in Baal worship. He went after idols. So Ahab exhibited characteristics of confusion, disobedience, silentness, uh, an obedient, an obedient hus husband, accomplice to Jezebel, believed in the lying spirit and refused to believe God. And what did he do? He got rebellious children. That's what you get. Apostle Paul said, who changed the truth of God into a lie? And who worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever? And he said, amen. That amen is the name of Christ. It's the name of God. The influence of Je Jezebel Ahab, influence in the world today. What do we have? One parent families, divorce, feminism. The one that started in Beijing, 1990 or 1992. They went, women's rights are human, are human rights. That's not what God said. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 and 21 say, submit one to another. It doesn't say women go and the men say, no, one to another, respect one another. That's what it means. Not to come and be the boss, no. When we see the things that are happening now, especially sexual manip manipulations. Every outfit that you see on television, what do they show? All those nonsense. 
young people are confused and rebellious. Drugs, music, all those things. You see the world, the type of music that does not obey the Lord. So what does the Bible tell us about rebellion? A clear study of the Bible shows, shows that God hates rebellion and you will punish the people for their sins. Once you rebel, God is going to punish you. I had people before who came, I, have, I, I want to open a church, I have opened a church. I want you to, to be a pastor of this church. I will bring people and say, no, I'm not called by men. My wife said, what? It's a good offer. Say, Mba, no, thank you for the offer. I don't need it. If I had refused God's calling upon my life, why should I accept one for men? You come and be used of men that he becomes my ogre in ministry. They say, hey, I'm the one who put you there. Say, no. Do you think I'll be able to come and preach like this? You will not come because they will tell you what to preach. Now, now you are telling the women that you're putting all those weaves, all this, this demonic Jezebelic hair from the, from the marine kingdom. There, half of the church is putting those things. They are putting on trousers. I'll come and preach against it. Oh, yes, because I don't need anything from anybody. I will not require anything from you. So when I preach, I preach knowing that the Lord, I, don't, I need something from the Lord, but not from you. So if you are offended, stay at home. If you don't want to listen to the message, to God be the glory. But you heard the message, you run away. It's rebellion because it was meant for your own good. The people are blessed when they obey the Bible and they are cursed when they disobey Bible commandments. He who loves, say, if you love me, observe my commandments. All rebellion is against God. Every rebellion is against God. When a wife rebels against her husband, she is not just rebelling against him, but rebelling against God who put the man as the authority over the wife. Rebellion can be very costly while Obedience is very rewarding. The Bible applies equally to an individual, to me, to your family, to the church, in the community, or the countries where we are living. That's the Bible for us. So let us pray that the spirit of rebellion, self-will, pompous, just like Absalom, he was very pompous. Say, you know, I'm the one who drives these cars. My father, built, uh, my father built me a very good place. There were princes, of course, they had some privileges. So he became pompous. Let us pray that the spirit will not hinder us from getting into the presence of God. May the Lord help us. May the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Continue to lead us on this way. Shalom. Amen. Amen.